It's showtime, folks. Enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to the next real Saturday. Oh, hold on, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Hey, nah, get no, leave. You're done. You started off. It was rough. You were cool in the middle, and now you just suck. Get the f out. You're done. You're done. Close the door. Thank you. Right, I'm sorry about that. That was um, 2021, and I was seeing it out the door because <laughs> let's just say I. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody, but we, we had to do that because, hey, welcome to the next Real Saturday Matinee for 2022, Woo! our weekly show where the next Real team gets together to talk about news, reviews, new trailers, and the hotly debated Me Memorial Weekly List Challenge. <laughs> I'm Rob Cavasco. With me is my partner in crime, Kyle Olson. Man, I thought that guy would never leave. <laughs> And joining us, uh, Lorraine Dom Milligan. Lorraine, welcome to Saturday Matinee. Thanks for having me. First appearance. Woo! This is going to go up in value. Outstanding. Um, well, we're going to hear more about uh, we'll hear more about you and stuff as we go throughout the show. We're going to get right into it. We got news to talk about. What are we watching? What do we think about it, Kyle? What's happening? It seems like this this last year was a very odd year for movie musicals. It's, oh, it was yeah. very up and down. There's, I mean, like uh, we had sort of In the Heights came out, which I thought was great and did not do very well. Uh, and then we had Tick, Tick, Boom, which showed up on Netflix and was, I thought, was amazing. And everybody went crazy for it. And suddenly the, the world's in love with Andrew Garfield again, which is sort of like, I've been here the whole time. Where have you people been? Uh, right. And then West Side Story comes out and everybody goes, hmm. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 been it's been interesting uh, it's been interesting ride uh, to see that it seems like uh, nobody wants to go to the theaters to see a a big time movie musical unless it has animated characters in it. I think West Side Story has ninth grade English stink on it. Um, so people may enjoy the story, but they're not feeling compelled to go see it. I think it's it does feel like homework. Mm hmm. Yeah. Plus, I, that, that's not one of my favorite Sondheim shows, nor was it one of Sondheim's favorite Sondheim shows. So, you know, I feel like I'm in good it company. It did create being some like, great memes. <laughs> oh, really? Mm -hmm. There was uh, one where it said, like, all sharks have to be Puerto Rican. And no one would have understood what this would have meant outside of context. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you Very think it's true. also, I think, I think also, well, and obviously we're dealing still with the issues of theater attendance in general. Sure. But I also think not just the young, you know, like that's a great point about, about the, the English, the homework sort of mm -hmm. feel. But then you have on the other side of it, you've got the older generation that's like, no, you didn't need to redo it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, really like, no, there's no, that's not even, not even going to buy. Like, you know what? And, and and it's sad because it does sound, and I have not seen it yet. Yeah, no, right, right. It sounds like it's really good, hmm. and that's unfortunate because I don't know. Sometimes you gotta. I mean, obviously, look at it. I, I it was this more of a vanity project than a active studio choice. I don't know. Does, does Spielberg make vanity projects anymore? I mean, this it, sounds it, like it was. I guess so, but it, it was this like a burning need of his that he wanted to do. And plus. You know, when's the last time he actually made an out and out bad movie? Oh, right. Like, sure. I mean, you know, the stuff he does is like he he operates on a <laughs> incredibly high level of skill where like even when the stuff is not very good, it doesn't it doesn't, you know, connect with you or whatever. You're like, yeah, it's still pretty good, though. Yeah. No, that's but my I know profound insight for the beginning I, of 2022. I Spielberg was, is good. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I love I really enjoyed In the Heights. Um, I Tick Tick Boom is on my next watch list. So probably over the final parts of the holiday, you know, I'll do that. And then, yeah, West Side Story, I will I will definitely peruse whatever streaming service it hits. Yeah, that's pretty much it I've been waiting for yeah. that streaming on that one, too. No, totally. Um, Lorraine, what have you been watching? What's been uh, entertaining you? Uh, I just finished Doom Patrol. Um, oh, wow. I'm behind on that. I, I completely love that series, and I wish it would get more chatter, at least in the circles I run in. Everybody talks about Titans. And not enough people talk about Doom Patrol. And Doom Patrol is the much better show. Uh, yes, I think so. Just because, well, it's sort of comparing apples and oranges. But mm. 
Doom Patrol is a really good orange. It's like a fresh, <laughs> you know, in season, direct from Florida orange. Um, and and then and then what kind of apple is Titans? Just if you continue your analogy. Um, it's I think it's a honey crisp where it's good, oh, but wow. you know it's going to be good, and so it's good, but it doesn't surprise you. Okay. okay. Like it's a a known quantity good. Um, it's very much follows kind of the superhero formulas. Although I did season three of the or episode three of the seasons Titans, where uh, mm. a certain character dies, <laughs> that shook me. Like I was not expecting that because heroes don't die, you know, unless you're Uncle Ben. But <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a few, but yeah, no, that that's true. Um, okay, so speaking of movies, uh, box office. Uh, okay, we did see that No Way Home is doing Gangbusters, the yeah. biggest uh, performing movie ever for Sony, ever. Yeah. Not just now. No, 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 ever. Uh, that makes it kind of seem like, wow, I mean, obviously, if you have a franchise or you have a movie that has this viral interest, people are willing to go to the theater. I mean, right? Like, oh, I mean, yeah. what's yeah. the lesson learned from this? It's just that. Who knows? I mean, like, you just there's there's only a few movies, there's a few franchises that can still do this, and Spider Man is clearly one of them. Yeah, and but you know you have to also give a lot of credit to Marvel because like of it's course, it's right. the well I'm saying like the, yeah. the Mar- it's Marvel Studios who no, put this absolutely. out because they didn't make a billion dollars with Venom two. You know, it, it's like well, you kind of have to kind of go with the where the I are. I hope they remember that when it comes time for agreement uh, negotiations. Yeah, yeah. Because so if you rewind the clock back to like the the latter days of Amazing Spider-Man 2, there was a real possibility that Sony was about to get bought that like they were yeah. like, we don't know how to make money in this thing. Can someone <laughs> just take these IPs off our hands with someone write us a check, please. And now <laughs> they seem to have risen back up to actually be a contender again because they got this now this nice billion dollars to tuck into their pocket to go. We know what we're doing. And and, and now Morbius. So. Oh, well, I just feel bad for Tim Cook. Tim Cook had that check ready (laughs) to sign. And that would have been, I still think that would have been the, had Apple done that, there was a rumor that obviously that Apple was going to buy Sony at that period. And they could have done it with cash. They could have done it with cash. Oh, they (laughs) they still could do it with cash. But they would have done it with cash. And when you imagine how it would have changed the whole development of Apple TV plus in that Mm. it would have ended up becoming the backbone of it. Like they would have built it all on that on not only on the catalog, but just on creative, the future planning. It could have changed things a lot. You know what? Everything probably worked out for the best. We'll see. I don't know. Watch Book of Boba Fett. Don't (laughs) delay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that'll be time. Yeah. Um, all right. Trailers. Uh, some really cool stuff uh, and some not cool stuff. <laughs> which <made me> me. <laughs> Kyle was first in. Uh, Kyle, what's your trailer? I got in there first. Uh, yeah, this is a it's a this is a small independent film uh, based on a really obscure character from like 75 years ago uh, that no way people know about. It's a, a little thing that Matt Reeves did as sort of like a pet project after you know, he's like, I'm done with apes. What I really want to deal with now is bats. So this is the third and I believe final trailer for The Batman. The Riddler is asking for you. The killer left this for the Batman. Why is he writing to you? You came. I've been trying to reach you. Riddler's latest. It's all about the Waynes. If we don't stand up, no one will. You got a lot of cats. Never think about strays. <laughs> the bat and the cat. It's got a nice ring. You a new friend of yours? I'm not so sure. I'm just here to unmask the truth about this cesspool we call a city. You're part of this too. Hands up! Stay still! How am I part of this? Oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. Bruce Way. Outstanding. Uh, Lorraine, what did you think? At, when I first heard that Robert Patton was selected as Batman, I was like, Ugh. but then I saw the trailers and I have to admit, I'm pretty intrigued. I, He's 
bringing a good tinge to the character. And, um, you know, I think that's the most important thing about Batman movies. Although I still carry a torch for Ben Affleck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Probably the only person in the world, but I thought he was a fabulous Batman. Um, there are others. You're, you're no, yeah. you're not alone. Yeah, and I think that the yeah. Zack Snyder Justice League cut has like redeemed sure. a lot of that too, because I think uh, the people's yeah. opinions of it on his Batman portrayal have changed since seeing that and going, oh, right. that's what you were doing. Well, generally, what I judge a person playing Batman on is how well they play both sides, and usually. Mm. We'll- Somebody will excel as either Batman or Bruce Wayne, but not as both. And I felt that Affleck really pulled off both very well. Um, so I'm waiting to see how Patton pulls off Bruce. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we have not seen much of that. And, and I, I know without revealing too much about you to the world, you do love your sad goth boys. I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're a beautiful thing in cinema, and I, I will go see them all the time. <laughs> well, I got okay. I I gotta say, based on this trailer, and this one is the theme is really the cat and the bat. So it yes. is very much showing that there is going to be between Selena. It's still Selena Kyle is the the cat mm-hmm. character. Um, mm-hmm. That there is a there is a very deep relationship story being woven throughout this movie, uh, very similar to Batman Returns, which I know was talked about in last Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, Here's what I think, though, Lorraine, just based on what you just said, I think you're going to be very happy because I think what this movie is going to do much more uh, grungily than any (laughs) Batman movie has before is blur the line between the conflicted soul of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Mm. I think Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne is going to not be a a well-seeming character. He is going to have no wow. issues with revealing his torturedness. And and I think you can see that, especially in this trailer, that in the past, you know, they, they, he can always turn on the Bruce Wayne, right, for whatever the situation is. No, this one, it, no, I, I think it is very much more so a, a blurred line between that. And I'm excited for that. It is a little bit. I don't know what to say. Grunge, steampunky. I don't know what the what the the sort of descriptive part of it. I want to say it looks like. I want to hold my opinion until I've seen it. But it it definitely has its own voice in a crowded Batman room. So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking because that was another first thought on hearing the both project was. Oh, another Batman. Great. (laughs) You know, uh, I think for people in my age group, we have um, had quite a few in our life, our adult lifetimes to pull on. So, um, yeah, so I'm interested because this one looks like a Batman that I haven't seen yet. Kyle, what did you this is your last trailer. So what do you think? Yeah, I think that, well, I was, I was, Riddler's always one of my favorite villains. So I'm, I'm liking that they're putting him in and not having him be, you know, I like Frank Gorshin. I like Jim Carrey, but like, I kind of really wanted more edge with Riddler. And now here it is. Now, I think it's maybe oversteering a bit, <laughs> but we'll see. But I like in this trailer that we're actually starting to see what the story is, as opposed to just Robert Tatson in the suit and a Batmobile and Catwoman. Like, okay, but what what is your story? What is what are you doing? And so we're seeing that the Riddler is sort of like trying to expose corruption. And then he sees Batman as being part of this corruption. So Ned is trying to expose him as well. Like he is serial killer, but also like has an agenda uh, and has and has a, a point that he's trying to make, uh, even though he'll he'll do it, you know, in blood. Uh, so I, it, it's interesting to see it, it with a Batman movie. You, of course, there's always what is what is the, the character like? But then what? How is he from Gotham? How is he, you know, responding to the the world around him? Like you can, you know, if you take, I don't know, Michael Keaton and put him into this Gotham, like it wouldn't make sense at all. So it's like they they all have to sort of work together, which is why you know Batman always tend to be such a high wire act because you have to have all those elements sort of working together. And you know, from what we've seen, it looks really good. I just the other, my other hope for this is I really hope I can visually see what's going on because whew, it is really really dark like <laughs> i just hope that he, matt reeves is great i've loved all the stuff he's done but like 
I re- I really want to like be able to make out and not just have it be like a, a metal leather thing flashes by the screen and a guy falls. Wow, what great action that was. Uh, so here's hoping. We don't have to wait very long, though, because it's coming out in March, March 4th, 2022. And if you don't, if you can't make it out of theaters, uh, you only have to wait 45 days and it's going to come to HBO Max. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they just really? announced that. Yeah. So like mid-April. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, so, there, okay. so, yeah, unfortunately, the HBO Max experiment uh, of going in theaters, which was a resounding success, was immediately killed as soon as the, the new year rolled around. So right. No but, more day and date. Right. Uh, but they now are, it looks like they're, they're trying to shorten the window for their, the movies that they, they flat out own. Oh, that, that makes sense. Um, you did. Way, I, Disney I, has been. If, if it goes well, I think you may have just spoiled the plot of the Batman two. <laughs> Michael Which is- shows up. To tutor, to tutor him, and he's so weirded out by this Gotham, and he's there to like tutor this Batman to be a better Bruce Wayne. Ooh. And there's the Joker. Okay, never mind. Okay, all right, um, all right. Trailer number two. Uh, I got in there. It is. Let me just say this before I say the title. Mm-hmm. I, I had a, I had a, I had to grope around for a trailer because I always like to get trailers that are new or that you know. Right. I'm just. I have four words for you. French science. Fiction comedy. Big bug. Here it is. So that happened. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to reverse it up. Kyle, what'd you think? Uh, I did not know this movie existed. And now I am so excited to see it because I love Jean-Pierre Genou. I don't right, know if yes. that's how you pronounce his name exactly. Cause I'm, I'm an awful American. Um, but I've, I'm a, I've been a huge fan of his all night from, from Amelie, which I know has now become sort of a right. punchline. But at the time when it came out was, was, you know, one of these things that we all loved and revered. It was like, Oh, Amelie. And now everybody's like, Amelie. Okay. But like city of lost children. Uh, we don't talk about alien, the alien movie that he did. Uh, but <laughs> the rest of it looks great. I have no idea what the plot of this is house robot romance. Okay. Or whatever it is. I am there. Uh, no matter what, I'm so excited that's coming to Netflix too. So I don't even have to do a weird import thing to find the, the, the Blu-ray that works on my player. Well, okay. I love the fact that you loved it. Cause I this is it. cool that I found this, right? Um, all right. So the plot is, it takes place in 2050 and a group of suburbanites are locked in for their own protection by their household robots, robots. Ooh. I can't, I can't speak while an Android revolt rages outside. Okay. There, there you go. So it's uh, like a, it's Amelie meets, um, Oh shoot. I forgot. What's the, <laughs> what's the, the, the Korean, um, intense drama where they're trapped in the house. Oh, I can't come up with it. Or Parasite? Uh, like the Parasite, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's yeah. Amelie meets, of... Paras- Amelie meets Parasite with robots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Aisle. There you go, Netflix. That's I'll give that to you for free. There's your pull quote. All right, so no, knowing that now, Lorraine, what did you think? <laughs> um, these are the kind of movies where I watch the trailer and I go, that's too wacky for me. I don't want to see that. But then I end up seeing it and absolutely <laughs> loving it and thinking it's brilliant and wishing more movies were like it. So I, I think this is one that I might like to see. And I also was like, it seems like there's a lot of robot movies and a lot of robot talk in the social media world right now and so i wonder what is pinging that particular need in people right now that's a good question maybe people have spent a whole year talking to their alexa and and (laughs) (laughs) it's just it's just paying early homage to our future overlords (laughs) it's yeah. <laughs> just, just, just getting in there now. We're just getting just in like, there now. Hey, just I like, made a movie where look I at said all the robots stuff we are did. Awesome. Look at we celebrated <laughs> you for all those years. No, I don't know. No, it looks fun though. I, 
you know, it really got me. Um, there is this early scene. It's very short. There's only about 45 seconds if you check mm-hmm. this out. Um, that cool movement of the countertop in the kitchen, like that got me. I was like, okay, that's cool, right? So uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you both enjoyed it. All right, Lorraine, you uh, have your trailer, and it is the. 355. Remember that story that they told us about in training? About George Washington's first female spy during the revolution. They called her Agent 355 because they didn't want the world to know her real name. But her legacy lives on. We're the top agents from around the world. American. British, German, Colombian, Chinese. But now we have a common enemy. They can start World War III from simple reach of their keyboard. So we need to join forces. It's like half the CIA's most wanted. Always such a tough guy. I'm not an agent, I'm a therapist. They thought I would give you my secrets. Do you have secrets? We put ourselves in danger so that others are not. I'll handle the guns. Are you in therapy? I should be. Um, I've seen several trailers about this, and I don't really know what it's about. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of worried that it's not going to be the best movie. Um, however, it will be seen because Sebastian Stan. And because of really great outfits. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. The trailers have all been really muddled and kind of dodging around things. So I feel like the villain is probably one of them. And it's going to be one that's too clever for its own good. And kind of will it'll either be super obvious and by the book or it'll just be a hot mess that no one really gets. And add into that, it's a January release, which usually is kind of a hint, too. Although it was supposed to be released last July. Um, oh. So that was height of movie season. So I don't know. But I I don't know. <laughs> I want to like it. It like has everything. It like went down a Lorraine checklist. But mm-hmm. it, just, it just it seems to be missing a particular gear that'll make it all work nicely. I, I agree. I, I have those same worries and concerns. I like the those. It was the same with me on paper. Yes, yes, yes. But then the way that they've been sort of presenting it really makes me nervous. Plus the fact that you're right. It, it was supposed to go out in July. But before that, it was supposed to come out in January uh, previous. So this is a double January release, which. Ooh, that's not good. Right. Because <laughs> ju- like July was going to be like the new January because it was sort of in that weird, can we go back to theaters thing? So, yeah, I don't know. And plus, Simon Kinberg has not been on a roll lately. He he did Dark Phoenix, and that was probably the oh. worst X-Men movie. Well, I'd say if it wasn't for New Mutants, that would have been the worst X-Men movie. It was pretty rough. So this is his writing and directing like no one can stop him now kind of movie. So I'm hoping that this will get to see what it's like when he can do whatever he wants. And it'll be amazing if it has to be the new Matthew Vaughn. But uh, I uh, I have my my uh, concerns. However, an amazing cast. So like if nothing else, he puts it like he cast it extremely well because all these people are phenomenal. So just seeing them together, hopefully be enough to have that sort of spark. So what do you think, Rob? Oh, um, I actually really enjoyed this. I'm a little leery. Yeah, it's uh, January 7th is the release date. So yeah. within days. Um, and Jessica Chastain looks like to be the main uh, female lead, but a big cast. Here's the thing. And Lorraine, you're going to have to forgive me. Kyle knows that I'm a big fan of alternate titles. Mm. As I was watching this trailer, all I heard in my head was King's Women of the Globe, <laughs> like because that's what this is. It's it's the King's yeah, yeah. Women across the world, right? Like, and not that not that there's but anything wrong with that, but I was like, oh, okay, well, all right, kind of cool. And like Sebastian Stan being, uh, I don't know, like I didn't get the sense that he's maybe the villain. Maybe he's the villain. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but here's the deal. I would assume this movie, like here's the deal. This movie will come out in theaters. It'll probably go quick to, to a streaming service. I would assume, um, I would absolutely watch it on a streaming service. Hmm. Yeah, true. 
it, that's it, my in the, it, if if this was coming out as sort of like a red notice yes i think that's actually right because like if all all these these pieces come together on that sort of same plane you'd be like yeah absolutely i'm just thinking about when you sort of put it up against you know in, in the mission impossible sort of sphere you kind of go Ugh. ooh, uh okay <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, great pick, though. I had not heard of this movie before this. Oh, so okay. uh, excellent pick. All right. Good trailers. Um, all right. So uh, before we get into the game, um, and it's not really a game, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm excited because it's the new year. Uh, I just want to go back and talk about something. So uh, we just had the holidays, whatever holiday you uh, celebrate. I hope Hopefully you had it was one, one where people give you gifts. Yes. If it was one that people give you <laughs> gifts, that's great. I received a gift. It was talked about in the last <laughs> last episode of this fine internet program. Um, I go to my mill. I go outside one day, and there is this long poster tube, and and I literally go open it up, and I had not yet listened to the sad man, so I just oh, want to say I did not, or that didn't even. I don't. I, let me just say I don't know. I go there. Um, I am literally pulling up the the. <laughs> the oh, you know, I say I know what I said, so I can. <laughs> Oh, what did you say? Like, what okay. did you say? I so, opened it. So no, I say I was say if I was gonna say like, do you do you, <laughs> you want to reveal what it is and then I'll reveal the secret origin of so, this? So so here's the deal. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Here you go. So it's a movie poster, mm-hmm. and only by the a, ra- law, a random tube shows up at your random house. tube. Random <laughs> tube shows up at my house. I open it up, and I and I see it's for movie posters. Was like the return address. It was some some company that's movie posters. Yeah, and I open it up. And only because the universe can sometimes be be just. <laughs> it was rolled in a way that the top line of this movie was clearly visible. I took a picture of it and sent it to you and mm-hmm. to another person. Yep. And the words were, every second chance begins with a first step. Mm-hmm. And let me just say, <laughs> as, as soon as I saw that, I went, son of a <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I, people sent me a step up poster. Yeah, and uh, so when you looked at the return address, I said, well, wh- what, what name? Who, who's, who had sent this to? Wait, I think there was a note. I think there was a note in there. I don't have it with, with me here, mm-hmm. but I it, it, I believe it was a, uh, a you and a, and a certain Mr. Pete. It was Kyle and Pete. Yeah. And I was- forget what the, what the message was, but, but it, it pales in a comparison to the story of how this came to be. <laughs> Let me just put it there. <laughs> so uh, every once in a while, inspiration strikes, and you never know where it's going to come from or what it's going to do, or will it be in the right amount of time? I happened to be visiting Rob's office, and he was in a meeting doing something very important, But I, so I was working on my own, and I thought, looking around the room and, and, and things, I'd like thinking, hey, maybe he could use some decoration. So I had this idea, and so I went to eBay and <laughs> found a thing, and so I sent an email to Pete, and I said, Hey, I have these two links. I, I don't know uh, why I would have these two things together, but like maybe you can make sense of why these two things occurred to me. One of them was an eBay link to a step up movie poster. And the second one was an address somewhere in Arizona. I'm like, do you have any idea what this is? And he was like, it's funny. I clicked on the first one and then put the second one in and sent it away. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens. So, yeah, it was <laughs> you're, the, you're the let two me just of tell us you. work together <laughs> to send you a vintage actual movie poster size like that a little one oh like no it's the real size, thing and, and, like- and it's being i'm deciding on what i'm going to do with it <laughs> but i will just say that it was hilarious that you're like oh yeah here just two things here's, yeah. here's this this link to this product yeah. and this and this person's home address yeah do what you will with that yeah and it just totally made me laugh thank you very much you're welcome i Merry continue Christmas. i continue to pay my penance for <laughs> For a previous <laughs> sentence here on this program, it's okay. It's totally fine. But that's okay though, because I did I did some homework. We have an interesting, uh, a, if you will call it a game that we are going to play today. Okay, that's right. I don't even you know I don't even know what to call it this. But here's what we're going to do. I have fourteen triplets. I am going to give each of you. Each of you, you're going to decide this. You're going to work together as a team. Wow. Okay. What are the? Why are there fourteen? Yes. Why are there fourteen? I am going to give you. Three movies by month that are coming out in this year of 2022. I'm going to give you the three movie names with the who who are the two main actors or actresses in them. Oh, wow. You will then decide you will rank order them. And here's what you're planning on. You're saying this is the movie that that should be the most excited to see. 
the movie that eh, I don't know. And then the third movie is, well, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Now, that's going to be tough because some of these, it is unbelievable. Here's why we're doing this. This great movie rank of 2022, <laughs> it is unbelievable the movies that are coming out this year. It really is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I couldn't even get them all on here. There might be a few that I have bonuses, but I'm just going to put them out. So are you guys ready? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, I'm going to tell you the three movies, and then you can discuss, and then tell me what your order is. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to begin with January. The first movie, Scream, starring Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox. Two, Morbius, starring Jared Leto, Leto and Adria Ariona. I want to say, I'm, and I'm going to mess up some of these names. Number three, Sesame Street <laughs> with <laughs> Bo Burnham and Anne Hathaway. Is that really coming out? I I tried to find anything that said it wasn't. There okay. isn't. It can't be, but I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I don't know. I found a list with that on it as it's waiting to release, but like much later in the year and still with no information. Well, yeah, because there's been nothing. Yeah. But it goes there. If you want if you want to switch that out with the yeah. three with the three five five or the three fifty five, I'll <laughs> leave it. Go ahead. You're okay, so what is our what are our categories are most excited about, least excited about? Oh no, about? just one, two, three. Just oh, because you're just gonna okay. rank them. That makes it easy. Sure, okay. Sure. <laughs> Mary bleep kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you could do that if you want. I hadn't thought of that, but that's great. That's great. <laughs> go ahead, Lori. What are you what are your first thoughts? I am have never heard of the Sesame Street thing, and I am deeply, deeply intrigued. <laughs> so I would rank that one first. Um, and I, Gerald Leto gives me the heebie-jeebies, so he gets the least. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Kyle, what do you think of that? Uh, that, you know, she, she makes a pretty good point. What, what is the one that's left out then? What, what would be in the scream. Or scream in the mail? Scream five, you mean? I well, but it's just scream. It scream. No, I refuse to call it. It's scream. scream. Or it's scream, scream answer the call, <laughs> which would be an amazing title. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It fits. It fits. I think that's the second or third time I've used that joke yeah. on the show. It's still good though. Still, still good. works. Yeah. Especially with all the Ghostbusters news. Um, the yeah, I mean, yeah, I, th I think I would agree just because the the Street thing is such a such an outlier of like, right. what is it like, and why now, and is it follow that bird too? Because this is not would not be the first Sesame Street oh, movie. Right. This would be the second Sesame Street movie. Right. So and Bo Burnham, yeah, and Bo Burnham being involved, <laughs> like as just as an actor, yeah. So like, so he's like writing inside and then pauses to like write a story about colors. Like, oh, my God. Can you imagine? I mean, uh, like the timeline would line up, right? Wait, he could do one from Big Bird's Nest? From oh, Ernie's wow. bathtub? <laughs> from inside Oscar's can? <gasps> from, wait, whoa, what? If that's what it is. Trying to be funny while stuck in a can. <laughs> there isn't much more to say about it. And can you imagine just Oscar pops in and be like, ah, no, get out of here. You stink. <laughs> that means you smell good. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Sesame, Sesame Street, number one. Yeah, I think so. Because I, can, I right. think I'm going to enjoy the Sesame Street movie way more than I'm going to enjoy more. It's going to be a gritty reboot tonight. I'm here oh, for it. Oh, yeah. I like that SNL, that grouch, though, <gasps> with David. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. All right. Sesame Street, January. All right. February. Here we go. These are your options. Oh, so excited. Number one. Death on the Nile mm. with Kenneth Kenneth Branagh and Gal Gadot. Gadot or Gadot? Have we figured this out yet? I think it's Gadot, but we all say Gadot because of the play. Yeah. All right. Fine. Yeah, okay. Number two, Jackass Forever oh. with Johnny Knoxville <laughs> and Steve-O. Or number three, Dog with <laughs> Jane Adams and Tyler Gage, or you uh, know him as Channing Tatum. Uh, wow. <laughs> they, got, they got two movies fighting for the bottom. Man, what do we got? <laughs> I yeah, I don't have to put Jackass bottom for me. And then, it's like and then dog more the January. <laughs> yeah, it's like January two. The more January. <laughs> 
Wow. Um, yeah. What a lazy title that is. I, I, it drives me crazy that they, people just can't title movies anymore. Michael Bay makes a big action movie about an ambulance and calls okay, it an ambulance. Don't, don't give away April. Hold on. <laughs> It's like, coming. Well, like uh, this new movie. It's like a heartwarming story about a soldier connecting with a, a dog. What should we call it? Dog. Uh, oh. Okay. Done. What's next? Oh boy. That's yeah, it. Those are, that's, that's, that like, order? Those, those are, that's my order. Lori yeah. Uh, blank, blank. The all three of them. <laughs> all right. All right. Death. All right. All right. Death. I understand February. This is where. Okay. Death on the Nile. That's number one. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I really liked yeah. uh, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I thought it was really good. Uh, I, I and Death on the Nile looks like it's going to continue on with that same sort of you know right. cool the mystery vibe. But then there's the Arnie Hammer of it all, and I don't know. So we'll see. That was yeah. another one that's been sitting on the shelf next to the three five five for a long time. Right. Okay. March. Here it comes. They all knew I love it because it got talked about last time. And here it is. The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and yes. Tyler Gage again. Channing Tatum. 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 Yes. All right. That's number one. Lost City. Number two, Downton Abbey, A New Era with Dominic West and Laura Haddock. And number three, The Batman with Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. I am very excited for Lost City. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's another one of those that they went down a Lorraine checklist. <laughs> um, and this one actually looks like it's going to make it work. I adore Sandra and I'm just, I'm feeling very much older romance writer is, you know, it's speaking to me. Um, <laughs> We already talked about Batman, so I think we know why that would be second for me. And then Downton Abbey. Okay. (laughs) I'm sure there's people who are excited. I am not one of them. Yep. I I agree with all that. And surprisingly, like I, I, because, uh, I like the idea of Lost City of a new idea. Like I've not seen, I mean, I've seen Jewel Denial and I've seen, you know, Romancing Stone stuff too, but I've never really seen this particular story, this combination stuff. There's been a ton of Batman movies. There'll be a ton of Batman movies, but there might only be one Lost City and I could care less about anything happening in Downton Abbey. Are you, are you, we are both in a Burn it to the ground. We're putting the Lost City above the Batman? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. My power's coming back. I'm staying on Sabbath. Yes. All right. All right. Oh, wait. Here it comes. April. Um, all right. Number one. It's Ambulance with Jake Gyllenhaal. And and is this uh, Yaha Abdul Mateen II? Yeah. Usually they just call him Yaya in, in interviews and stuff, too. Okay. So that's how gotcha. I think of it. All right. Cool. Ambulance number two. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. When, when I look this movie up, mm-hmm. Ben Schwartz and James Marsden. James Marsden doesn't get top billing on this movie? <laughs> what? No. He's just uh, the guy. Okay. All right. Sonic okay. Now, it. number three. Now, this one I'm going to throw a curveball to you because there's a wild card. Oh, okay. Number three is Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore <laughs> with yeah. Eddie Redmayne and Jude Law. Mm-hmm. But I'm throwing in a curve. Do you have a fourth movie that you can put in the rank order too? The Unbearable Weight of Ooh. Massive Talent with Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. Which had to be in there. <laughs> yeah. Boy. So Ambulance, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Fantastic Beasts, Nick Cage. All right. I'd say the first thing we do is we kick Fantastic Beasts to the curb because that's what Warner Brothers should have done after the box office performance of the last one. Yeah. I, 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 my, my, you know, I, I, I love the Harry Potter universe. I love the Wizarding World. But like this franchise is going nowhere and it does not make any sense at all. The last, that little movie was flat out terrible. Like. I don't even know what they were thinking. So that's off of the list. Cause I think the, 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 the other three in makes a very interesting conversation. So let's, let's talk okay. about that. I'm most excited about the Nicholas cage one, just because mm. his movies have become steadily, steadily more bat whack. <laughs> and for some reason he makes them work. Like, I don't know if there's just this, like opposite of charisma that compels you anyways or if it's like just watching a train wreck or what but like i 
I don't know if excited is the correct verb for this, but it would be the one that I would see if I were standing at the movie theater and trying to decide with what to see. Ambulance would be next because I love those horrible movies like that. Like there's a disaster and these undeveloped characters have to get through it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and everyone like, is beautiful <laughs> yes and i'm just i'm waiting to see like all the amazing car chases that with an ambulance um and then i am never been a fan of video game movies so sonic mm. would be through no fault of his own just for his <laughs> genre would be last <laughs> Yeah, and I, I would agree with with all that. Uh, I, I I might put Sonic higher, but I'm I won't fight about it because I saw the first one and it 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 is the the Nicolas Cage of video game movies if you want to use that same analogy because <laughs> it it shouldn't work like it, nothing nothing in there is like and it has the worst product placement I think I've seen in years just unbelievably egregious uh, but it still comes together and Ben Schwartz is amazing. He's a great voice actor. Like it's, it has a real charm to it. And just seeing Jim Carrey, just being the Jim Carrey, we all love. Uh, yeah. There's, there's something about that movie that just works. So I'm curious to see if they can sort of recapture that, that same formula and make it work again a second time. So I'm not, not dreading that one at all. Dude. And yeah. And, and, and the, the Nicholas Cage-ness of Nicholas Cage. I mean, how this is the most Nicholas Cage movie ever made. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the order. Yeah, Nick Cage, so. Ambulance, Sonic. Sonic uh, in for a big year because Lego just announced there's a new idea set of a whole level of Sonic. It looks really cool for if you're an old Sonic fan and you love Legos. Uh, you can check that out. All right, in May. Here we oh go. Boy. There's another Here wild card. Another wild yeah. card in May. Okay. Number one, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of, Ma Multiverse of Madness, Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen. Number two... Not to be outdone, on the other side of the aisle, DC's League of Super Pets with Kevin Hart and Keanu Reeves. Number three, Top Gun Maverick with Tom Cruise and Miles Teller. All that movie has still not come out yet? There's a wild card, Legally Blonde 3. What? With Reese Witherspoon and Alana Ubach. Ubach? Ubach. That's Ubach, probably yeah. that. Who knew? That, I didn't know that. Is that is that like have they have they made that movie? Yeah, that's like, legit. Th oh yeah, that's wow. totally legit. Like it's not just one of those like uh, we we have some paper oh. sign that say we're gonna make it. Nope. May. Doctor oh. Strange, Super Pets, Top Gun, Legally Blonde three. Okay. Um, <laughs> I still don't believe that Legally Blonde three exists. Um, <laughs> it's 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 the Schrodinger's cat of Legally Blonde movies. So I'm gonna like put that aside because. Until I see even a single image of Elle Woods, I, I, I don't believe it's real. All right. So I'm to take your wild card and let it run wild. <laughs> uh, uh, League of Super Pets. I saw the trailer again for that one uh, this weekend when I saw uh, Sing 2, and that looks awful. Like, it just looks terrible. And I, I hate, I hate, hate when these, these, like, sort of, Disney never does this, but... When, uh, when most, I won't say never, but whenever they take a thing and they're like, hey, uh, we have this, with this the fun animal doing weird animal stuff on there. He's jumping around. What should we do? Uh, why don't we play jump around over it? Like, oh, uh, like that. Do you know what that song is about? Do you know what the lyrics of jump around that's are? Why you, that's why you use Van Halen. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> either way, so either nice. way, it's horrible. It's I terrible. I mean, like, I, I'm happy that the DC were getting beyond just another Batman reboot and, you know, watching the Waynes die again. But at the same time, really? Like, Crypto gets his own movie and they introduce a bunch of other, like, there are a bunch of other, like, super powered animals in the DC universe. You didn't have to create a whole nother group of them that Crypto has to mentor. And also, does the rock need more work? I know. Like, it's so ridiculous. I don't know. It's, it, everything on that thing, everything about that, just like. He recorded that movie way. in his car. He yeah, has exactly. a mic in his car. But Come on. He's like, like, back, like going back and forth between the set and his uh, workout tent. He was Stop. recording that. So yeah, I'm putting that one at the bottom. So, Laurie, what, what, what are you going to put yeah. on top two? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. I Yes, I'm surprised we aren't getting like just an avalanche of animated films just because it seems like voice work and animation would have 
worked better in COVID workforces than movies, but true. Okay, so what are, what are the what so are the you got okay, so you got DC Doctor three, Strange. so it's it's Doctor Strange and Top Gun and Top Gun. Oh well, oh jeez, can we put can we put Top Gun right next to League of Super Pets down? There? <laughs> it's a, top, a little bit above Super Pets. I just don't. I just yeah. don't care. I just don't care. I it's, mean, maybe at the time when they first announced it, if it like they had announced it six months later, it came out. But like waiting for that movie for two years, I I, I cannot care less about yeah. what what Maverick is doing now. It just doesn't matter to me at all. So Doctor Strange and then nothing else that month matters. No, that's not true. But uh, agree. <laughs> of, what, I, of what you've listed, that's uh, like right. 55 year old vets is not my <laughs> yeah. wheelhouse, so, oh, I guess. Like, so here's here's my three ranking. Um, Doctor Strange opening night, uh, Doctor Strange opening weekend and then Doctor Strange uh, two weeks later with the, with my daughter. So there's my, my thing. <laughs> I'm going to agree the with you on that. <laughs> matinee prices. Exactly. Um, all right. Okay. Well, that closed. That made May easy. All right. June. We're now we're in the summer. This is it. Jurassic World Dominion mm-hmm. with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, hell no. With Jack Black and Ice Cube. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Go on. And, and Lightyear. With Chris Evans. Okay, I can already tell you your list is out of date. Oh, no, uh, what Because, happened? oh, hell no, is not happening because um, uh, Ice Cube refused to get the vaccine. Oh, so wait, that's the movie? I yeah. saw that article. Yeah, so he is he is off that movie, so that movie is not coming out in June. So, okay, well, here, but actually, I think this is an interesting question. Jurassic World or Lightyear? Yeah, that's what comes out to Ah, uh, boy. Lightyear. You think so? Mm-hmm. I don't care how terrible it is, I not interested in Jurassic at all. So. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the, uh, see, you you listed the stars of of Jurassic World as being Chris Pratt and um, Bryce Dallas Howard, but like that's not what's exciting to me about it. Right, right. It's the fact right. that the original people from uh, Jurassic Park are coming back. So right. Dr. Grant, Dr. Sadler, like that's more exciting to me about that. I actually put I would actually put uh, Jurassic World higher because of that, because I re- I love those characters so much. And I want to see sort of them in this new world, even though I think the last Jurassic World movie was pretty awful. Uh, I just don't understand what light year is yet. Like I have watched the previews. I've, I've read the interviews, but what is it like? I, I don't get it. Like we Chris already have Toy Story Evans. movies. We've already had a, it's Chris Evans. I, and, and, and maybe he's good at voiceover. I don't really know. Uh, we're going to see. And it's Pixar. So there always is a median level of quality, but I still don't know why that movie even exists. So it's, it's sort of like, I, I, this is I have to be the grump and be like, justify your existence to me, light ear. Kyle, Kyle doesn't like the Pixar multiverse, but whatever. I don't. I, mean, I really don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> Too many <I> multiverses. <laughs> All right. So, what do you think then? Do, do you have? Oh, there's no agreement, or oh, no we agreement. took one out. It was only two. I and I think we both wanted to see Oh Hell No the most, and we're terrible <laughs> yeah, traumatized by that. Uh, I think Jurassic will be the bigger hit, so that. And okay. I, right. I can say I can say I will guarantee I'm going to see both of them. So gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. July. Uh, well, then it's really going to get tough for oh, you boy. now. Minions: The Rise of Gru with Steve Carell or Lucy and Lucy Lawless. Mm-hmm. Thor: Love and Thunder with Chris Hemsworth mm-hmm. and Natalie Portman, or Black Adam with Dwayne Johnson and Noah Centineo. Lorraine Dom Milligan, tell them what's number one. Number one is going to be Love and Thunder. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. where there's thunder, there's rain, and where there's wet Thor, there is low rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> I did not. I knew it. I knew if I served it to her, she would knock it out of the park. Well done. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, enough said. There doesn't have to. You don't have to worry about two and three. Done. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, I know what three is. Minions. Give me a break. Um, <laughs> all right. August. Uh, here we have. Okay, so I put this in because I, I'm gonna get Jason Statham's names right so that he doesn't. Statham. St- what did I say? Statham. It's Statham. Why well, didn't use the I'm R get this on a time? Jesus, I'm gonna get on a plane. Oh my I'm god! Come to Phoenix. I'm gonna find Jason you. Jason Statham. I'm gonna drag you out in the street. Statham. Statham. Yes, you it's got better it when I have it wrong. Jason Statham, Kevin Hart in The Man from Toronto. Or, oh wow, <laughs> yeah. by the way, did I mention this is August? Yeah. 
Yeah. Number two. Wait. <laughs> number two. You thought January was rough. Wait yeah. till you see August. August. Um, number two, Secret Headquarters with Owen Wilson and Michael Pena. Never heard of it. And, or Samaritan with Martin Starr <laughs> and Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> that was a horrible stuff. Yeah. Listen. Oh, you got it. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Man from Toronto, Secret Headquarters, Samaritan. Oh, battle the bad titles again. Um, yeah. I, you know, just I'm going to put Martin Starr at one. Sure, let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Martin Starr. Oh, wow. Uh, I have not heard of any of these movies. No, nor had I. Um, however, all of them star people who are better than they ought to be in Ooh, their interesting. little... Little genres, so I think they could be movies that you're not particularly like gunning to see, but if you do see it, you're like, yeah, I liked that. That was that was a good movie. It's kind of like in the uh, nice guys mm. uh, okay. genre, I guess, like where you're like, yeah, that was better than it should have been. So <laughs> that's what I'm gonna rate all three of these having. Although Samaritan probably would be my least <laughs> favorite. <laughs> yeah, in terms of like quality, like what we think it is, probably Man from Toronto first because it's got a, a pretty good cast. But it seems like a lot of yeah. just, uh, you know, dark people doing dark things. I don't know. So Yeah. <laughs> well, and then it seems like the Secret Headquarters all lose. is yeah. the well, the opposite of that, which is like I, I don't think oh, August. This was, yeah, <laughs> let's do, let's, August let's is inconsequential. Let's do it by terrible titles, and so we'll come here and try yeah. the least wor- least worst secret headquarters, second least worst, right. yeah. Yeah. worst worst. <laughs> All right, got it. All right, September. Unless we he's have. from Samaria, in which case it goes back to number one. That's right. With Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> then I'm in. Then, oh, I don't even know. All right, fine. Uh, as long as he's not a specialist. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, so <laughs> in September, I mean, you might need to accelerate this. I, we don't have a whole year to yeah, get I through know. all this entire year. All right. Year. So <laughs> sept- September, we have Don't Worry, Darling with Florence Pugh and Olivia Wilde, Mission Impossible Seven with Tom Cruise and Rebecca Ferguson, or Puss in Boots: The Last <laughs> Wish with oh. Antonio Banderas and Chris Miller. Uh, again for bankrupt for ideas really another puss in boots we're doing yeah, this as totally not directed video seven. well and mission impossible the, seven. the weird thing about the mission impossible movies is they get better so i'm i'm putting mission impossible at top uh because i love the mission impossible movies and also because my wife has a has a girl crush on rebecca ferguson so it's kind yeah. of, and also <gasps> Haley atwell is in that movie yes so, yeah <laughs> see that changes that right so Lorraine, you, Rob, you're leaving out the relevant data. <laughs> yeah, I know. I did. I got you one up. <laughs> and, okay. and Mission Impossible Seven will probably be so long it should just cover all three spots. <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably. probably gonna, I'm, I bet you it's going to come in at like two and a half hours, if not three. Yeah, you're hours. probably right. Um, all right, October, Ticket to Paradise with Julia Roberts and George Clooney. Spider Man across the, <laughs> well, Spider Man yeah, across the Spider Verse Part One. Yeah, Haley Steinfeld, uh, Shamik Moore. So mm-hmm. we got that. Yep, yep. And then Jamie Lee Curtis will finally <laughs> bring closure <laughs> to the incredible. It's not a trilogy. It's actually more than that. Halloween ends. Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer. Uh, I, I believe the uh, order you listed them is the order they should go in, because as much as I love a Spider-Verse, I don't think they're going to make that date. And I, and I don't think I need to see it now. What? Oh, because honest, you've, seen, you've seen the live action. Because I've seen the live action. I don't need to. I don't need to see anymore. But Miguel O'Hara. Yeah, I know. I, I want to wait for him to get him in the MCU. Fine. <laughs> Lorraine, what do you think? Agree. I mean, there's nothing to get super excited about on any of these. Um, yeah. Ticket to Paradise, even though it's not a sequel or a part of a greater project, it's, you know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we haven't seen them. We haven't seen George Clooney be, you know, like happy in a movie in a while. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. November, The Flash with Ezra Miller and Michael Keaton. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever with Angela Bassett and Lupita Nyong'o. Or Lyle Lyle Crocodile with Javier Bardem and Constance Wu. I think Lyle Lyle is the only one of those movies that's actually going to come out in November. 
Yeah, probably. I really and like. I, I honest to God, I think I like both those are going to slip to twenty twenty three. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't even know Lyle Lyle Crocodile existed. Now is that going to be like live well, action, like supposedly like Mr. It, uh, mix hybrid live action and and CGI? Okay. Based yeah, on a that, popular sixties children's book. Yeah. Um, wait. So you think? So we based on that Lyle Lyle Crocodile? Yes, I think because I think it's the only one of those three is actually going to come out in November. Yeah, probably true. I mean, I say this is, and this is not me being, uh, you know, cynical or snide. Right. I'm just saying, like the way things are going. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Yes. Lorraine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. December. Uh, Avatar two with Sam Worthington <laughs> and Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. That movie's not real. It's an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an elaborate embezzlement scheme Aqu- for James Cameron to take money from I, Fox. So ridiculous. <laughs> Aquaman and the Lost to Kingdom with Jason Momoa. Uh, <laughs> comes out. It's just a series of NFTs. Uh, with and, uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen mm-hmm. and Babylon with Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. Which I knew nothing about yeah. when I saw that on the list. <laughs> yeah, I never I didn't heard of that one either. Um, th- is, do we even have a concept on what Babylon is? Is it no. like, does it take place in Babylon? It's not clear. Okay. But Brad Pitt, so you know. Yeah, true. I once again, I Protect think Babylon is probably the only one of those three that's actually going to come out. And dude, I think Avatar is going to move again. Oh boy, who knew? All right, I think wasn't that first announced like to come out? The it was supposed to drop in twenty eighteen. Oh, oh wasn't the yeah. First I mean, one? This has been a I mean, long haul development. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, in addition to the fact that it was like ten years between the first and the second one, now it's um. Years. Okay, so we have a bonus. We just have a bonus round. Uh, round one is Disney Plus. Ch- cheaper by the Dozen with Zach Braff and Gabrielle Union. Disenchanted with Amy oh, Adams and Patrick Denzi. Another Denzie. cheaper by the Dozen? Oh, oh, dude. Guess what? You know what the third one is? What? Three Men and a Baby with oh. Zach Efron. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, actually, that like I was like, no, no. Oh, it's Zach Efron. Well, that's interesting. Only if the three men are in a polyamorous relationship. Oh, I like it. Oh, wow. I would, I would sign on for that. Okay. All right. All right. Three men are baby. We'll just, we'll just send that. All right. And finally, Netflix. Chicken Run 2. <laughs> really? Okay. The sc- I, and I'm sorry. I ended here. I, I went low. The School for Good and Evil with Charlize Theron and Michelle oh, yeah. Yeoh. That's from okay. the book series, right? Yes. That's an old yeah, book series. Okay. And and I'm not kidding you. This is real. Untitled Lindsay Lohan Christmas movie starring Lindsay Lohan. I think it's pretty clear. OK, well, <laughs> you know, every, we all have our, our blind spots. We all have our, our weaknesses um, uh, for Lorraine. I would say it's Sebastian Stancers for mine. It's Lindsay Lohan. I would put that one at number one because I cannot wait to see that movie. Really, I yeah, I am a I am a in in the pocket for Lindsay Lohan from uh, from the beginning. Wow, yeah. did not see that coming. Wait, Lorraine, shaking. Are you are you in agreement? He like I. <laughs> the minute you said Lindsay Lohan, I was like, I know Kyle's first pick, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's going to be glorious too. Um, yeah. I think they're going to try to, um, you know, swing on Hallmark's Christmas movie things, and they are mm-hmm. going to miss by a trillion miles, yep. and it's going to be glorious. Yes, this has this has wonderful train wreck potential, yes. but like. Snow covered oh. train wreck. It's just yes. gonna oh. with Christmas lights decorating. Oh, it's gonna be good. yeah. It's okay, gonna become so, a classic. Like yeah, well, for all oh, yeah, for certainly certain reasons. Um, yes. Okay, so here's so here's the, here's the general question. When I was when I was doing this list, and I was like, wow. Here's what's funny is I agree with almost all of your picks, right? At the end of the day, you know, there's there are three movies that I'm looking forward to next year or this year. Now it is this year, right? Yeah, exactly. Doctor Strange. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder mm-hmm. and I'm going to say it Lightyear. Really? Okay. Yeah. Based on the fact that I agree with you Wakanda's uh, Black Panther's not going to make it. There's a bunch of movies that are not going to make it. Based on what we said here do you guys, what do you think? What's your, what's your couple big movies that you're most looking forward to? 
I would agree with that. I mean, I think uh, obviously as, as being a, a hardcore comic nerd, so Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, Thor 4, uh, Mission Impossible, like I said, is great. I think Spider-Verse, I, I'm super excited about that movie. I just don't think they're going to make it. Lorraine, any uh, agree? What's your, I assume, love uh, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder is going to be your number one? That's going to be my number one. I am going to hold a torch for The Flash. Um and the uh, Charlize Theon movie on Netflix. Um, oh, is it? Is it doing another old guard, or does she have something else? It's not another old guard. Um, I forget the title, but I don't know. Netflix has just they make movies that are better than they should be. I guess like there's for you know they're smaller in scale so you get a little bit more character development and a little bit more like downtime in the action films and i i like that so well thank you guys for uh joining that was fun i hope everyone's excited about yeah, uh, 2022 the year you ahead found one movie that you're excited about that you had to know about before absolutely all right now listen if you're not yet a member but would like to become one just head over to the next com slash membership five bucks that's the most that is the most it will cost you you can do less, but I mean, five dollars would be a whole lot better. You get access if you pay some money. You'll get access to live streams as we record, usually early access to shows in your very own personal podcast feed, which that is cool. Uh, your access to the super secret member channels and Discord, member bonus episodes, and even stickers. And I'm going to tell you something: there is a new sticker coming in. No one knows about Ooh. it yet. I'm Ooh. working on a little project of mine. It might be Memorial something. You just hold on, you'll see. Uh, and if you're wondering what the movies that the next reel is going to be talking about in the coming weeks and months, you can visit our headquarter page on Letterboxd, where you'll find a list of all the movies in the 2022 season. And while you're there, Letterboxd is offering a discount to anyone listening to the next reel. Just use the code next reel, all one word, at checkout. And you can upgrade your Letterbox account to pro or patron with a 20% off discount. This discount also works for renewals. Okay, this is it. Now, Kyle and I had a really funny thing happen. Siri I was asking you, what's the what's the topic? Because I hadn't mm -hmm. yet listened to the end of when we when I was starting to make this. And yeah. you said, oh, yeah. And it and it and it thought it was you told me originally on your yeah. text yeah. dramatic light changes. And yeah. I went, oh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, like movies that have like a dramatic light change yeah, that happens somewhere in the movie. Sure, sure. And then and then I saw, <laughs> no, it's dramatic life, life. choices. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I don't know what Siri must have been like just enjoying my tunes because I don't know how she's uh, that was pretty funny. That. Um, OK, so I took a very serious I took a very serious tone on this. I wanted to bring I wanted to show that I have range because everyone knows that I'm a person of quite of quite uh, big range. But we'll see what happens. Um, Kyle, you were first on the trailers. Yeah, what I, is your first pick? I, I sort of did the same thing. I like as much as there could have been like uh, the moment Steve Rogers decided to take the infinity formula. But no, it's like I um, I decided to go a different different way as well. So what I looked for is um, moments where they could have gone the easy way, but instead made a harder choice. Like like everything was except that you could have just gone the but instead they turned the, and they did that around really good music. So those are the two things that I put Ooh. together. I found an actual interesting list of these three that I had put together. So I'm going to describe the moment just a little bit and then give you a little of the lyrics, even though I, I'm not going to sing them or we can't play them because, you know, the RIA will shut us down, uh, but I'll do it. So the first one is uh, a young singer finds out that the person that she has idolized her whole life. Her, her favorite singer has been in seclusion, but there's a chance to bring him back out. So she does all of this work to try and get him to get the confidence to come back because he had suffered a, a tragic loss. He just couldn't, he had not heard his songs in all this time. He had not played any of his music, but she managed to bring him back and they get to the stage and they go out there and he gets to the edge of the stage and just cannot do it. He cannot bring himself to come out anymore. So she goes out and gets the people to sing one of his songs. And so she sings quietly, acoustically into this giant stadium. I have climbed the highest mountains. I have run through the fields only to be with you. And the audience responds, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And it gives him the courage to walk out and perform for the first time in 15 years in Sing 2 from 2021. Actually, oddly enough, performed by Bono. <laughs> 
Like he does, he actually does a really good acting job in this movie. Um, and, 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 and you're like, did you just spoil the climax of the movie for you? And I say, yes, I did, because the third trailer also spoiled the climax of the movie for everyone. So it's not really on me. It's on the marketing department who went, why don't we just give away everything and get to get people into the theater? But it's a really great moment, and uh, they really the, that's like one of the few genuine like emotional moments in that movie that is sort of filled with just like a lot of you know pop and pizzazz and 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 let's just put another pop song on. People like that. Wow! So that's my first one. I'm that's bold. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked oh, it, about this it, conversation. Yeah, it, 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 it gets better from here. Don't worry. That oh was, no, uh, that's okay. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to use a term that apparently has been going around the Satmat Studios. I think you know it. It's called the Cabosco stink. And I'm not going <laughs> to say anything at all. I'm going to allow the viewers to decide. I'm just saying. No, that was that was good. Um, OK, I, I've got number two. Uh, all right. My first pick. OK, so guess what my theme is? You're never going to believe this. It was the holidays. In my uh, particular uh, faith circle, I reflected on a lot of things, thought about a lot of stuff. And I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick movies with priests who oh, okay. have to make a hard sacrifice. And you'd say to yourself, you can't wait a mid- minute. You can't use Midnight Mass. That's a television no, show. No, that no, no, no. Yeah, well, no, no, that, that, that choice. <laughs> Don't you keep your <laughs> somewhere else. That's not how it goes the other way. Anyway, never mind. I digress. Yeah. Um, and you say to yourself, wait, like dramatic life choices. What do you mean? Like, how can you do that? Yeah, I can. Number one. And we have talked, I think, before on the show about the haunting soundtrack to this movie. The score is absolutely amazing. I'm talking about 1986's The Mission, uh, the experiences of a Jesuit missionary in 18th century South America, Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons. And you can take the choices, the life choices of either of them. Robert De Niro as Captain Mendoza. He is this basically this cartel running kidnapper who's a slave trader and he repents and he changes his life and let's just say it doesn't end well, neither for him or Jeremy Irons, who plays Father Gabriel. It is an unbelievable movie. That music still (laughs) is so incredible. Uh, The Mission. The Mission, okay. Lorraine. Um, I chose to look at this through the lens of what happens after the dramatic change. Um, Do you you break the cycle or do you do you bring all your old baggage along with it? Um, and nice. for the first one, I wanted to pick a movie that I doubted had ever been mentioned on this show. <laughs> and so I went with uh, Glitter starring Miss Mariah wow. Carey. Wow. Wow. Uh, it is a terrible movie. <laughs> um, like completely awful, just on every bad script, bad <laughs> acting everything um but it does follow the path of a young plucky orphan with her plucky orphan friends who um become a well-known pop star (laughs) and uh the only good part about it is there's the twin towers in the movie so you get to see those (laughs) Yeah, I, I I have not seen that movie, but I know exactly when it came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so she just changed for the better, and she does uh, move on from her past traumas. So I guess it's hopeful in that if you want to stick around long enough to see that happen. All right. Okay. Wow, would wow. never have thought that's a great pick. Yeah. And it's like, never been picked before. Interestingly, like, lead actor is Bono and... Mariah Carey. <laughs> Weird connection for like dramatic life moments, but uh, all, right. All, right, all right, back to me. All right, so, uh, my next one. Okay, so um, it's hard to come back from abject humiliation. So like when you have like stood on the stage and had someone just absolutely destroy you uh, to like go through the stuff and then basically face on the person who had had beat you so badly and and stand up and actually be able to not only you know go after this person but actually admit everything that they said every insult every and admit to everything that they had had said that had laid you low was absolutely true and then to go on so you know look i mean if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment would you capture it or just let it slip so we're talking about eight Sp- mile 2002 unless you get spaghetti yeah. <laughs> you're sure that's right 
<laughs> oh, I think you have a little theme. I like your theme going yeah. on here. Very nice. Good pick. Thank um, you. All you right. Got? So uh, my second pick, uh, again, what, I mean, seriously, uh, how do I continue? The priests making uh, sacrifices. Uh, this is an amazing movie if you've never seen it. Uh, 1989's Romero, starring Raul Julia hmm. as the Salvadoran Archbishop Oscar Romero, who is now, actually now currently a saint in the Catholic Church. Um, this was during the Civil War in, in the Salvadoran Civil War, started uh, with the 77 presidential election, went all the way to, I think, 92 uh, in um, basically he is outspoken against all of the military regime that was causing all these atrocities and he's murdered while in the middle of celebrating mass and became this huge m image in El Salvador for uh, for freedom and for liberty and for truth. And so he made he he made this this active choice that, hey, I'm going to do this. And he paid for it with his life. Uh, amazing portrayal by Raul Julia. If you're a fan of Raul Julia, yeah, you want to see something else other than the Adams Family, right? Or the Adams Family Values, or Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> you watch this, you totally <laughs> different take on Raul Julia, Romero. Very nice. Right. I hadn't even heard of that one. That's really yeah. interesting. All right, go ahead, Lori. Uh, my next pick would be I Tanya. Oh, oh. Um, I liked the idea that like. It was sort of like the generic sports movie with the underdog, but then like it all went to heck because she could not, she had neither the support system surrounding her nor like the inner, <laughs> inner strength to be what mm -hmm. she could have been. Um, and also because if you haven't seen the movie, it has got some of the best acting performances I have ever seen. Um, Paul Walter Hauser, who is one of my favorites to begin with, was just creepy down to your marrow. <laughs> and it's it's just a good movie to prove that success in life is not just you being good. It's who you surround yourself with, who is in your circle, who is in uh, mm. who's in your competitor yeah. circles and go see it. It's a good movie. <laughs> Oh, fantastic movie. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a great, great pick. Love it. All right, cool. All right. All right, All right so back to the, All right, so my last it, one um, is a... Um, it's, it's easy to... If someone has done you wrong, it's very easy to just completely cut them out and never do it. And, and, and sometimes that is the best decision, but sometimes there's something that you can do to actually make it matter to actually have an impact to to open your heart and allow this thing to happen and and especially when the thing that's between you is a dead child uh, but there are moments that the words don't reach there's a grace too powerful to name we push away what we can never understand we push away the unimaginable they are standing in the garden alexander by eliza's side she takes his hand it's quiet uptown. So Hamilton from 2020 from Disney Plus. Yes, like it, it, they're the easiest choice for you to make was just like let that dude suffer for the other time. But there sometimes forgiveness, just the extending of the hand is all it takes. Dude, I you saw my face. I was like, dude, you're do you're nailing this. <laughs> you <laughs> Lynn crushed Moran, that. Lynn Manuel was nailing it. I was just merely the reflection. Well, you he is the no. sun. I am merely a moon. But you uh, elocuted. Is that a word? Eh, whatever. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what did you Grungily and elocuted. Sure, they're in the thing now. Twenty twenty two. Put a call Webster. Good pick. Oh, that's good. All right, cool. Um, what you got? Okay, so I'm going to close out. Priests, sacrifice, Priests. life decisions, 2016's Silence from Martin oh. Scorsese, the movie that he wanted to make for years and years and years. Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, uh, 17th century Jesuit priests who travel from Portugal to Japan and endure incredible persecution and also a lot of different things. It is a very deep story. But the thing I love about the movie is not only is there sacri sacrifice of life, in one of the main characters. But then there is this great story about even sacrificing the fate, your faith outwardly in, in the pursuit of it. I mean, it is a very beautiful story. And Scorsese wanted to tell this for a long time, 
Andrew Garfield, man. Oh, you want to talk about another movie that you watch and you just go, whoa. Yeah. What? Definitely check it out. Silence. There it is. You haven't. I'm sure and you third have. Andrew Garfield reference of the episode, I know. too. They a lot of we're heavy. Garfield heavy. <laughs> Lori, take us home. What do you got? <laughs> I got the parent trap. Oh, um, I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I like <laughs> partially for Kyle, but also oh. I just felt like it also took on monumental change in which the characters didn't quite understand how that changed for other people in their lives. Um, their plan was just, I want to meet my other parent, maybe force them to get together, but like, it totally upheavaled everyone's lives. And, you know, thankfully it worked out for the best. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I think it was a very good uh, example of people kind of making a choice with only what they had in their world and not thinking of the larger ripple effect. Really nice. nice picks. Yeah, I like it. All right. Those are good lists. Right. Hey, I know there was some controversy about like the, the list from last week. I think, well, I mean, it was sad Christmas or so whatever. This one, I think they did a great job. I think we handled it very well. What are we going to give the next team to uh, play with? What, what, do we, what do you think we got? Well, first thing, I, well, I was thinking just, just in terms of our conversation stuff too, like the fact that Andrew Garfield sort of went from like eh, that guy to that guy. And like, even we're talking about with Lindsay Lohan too, I'm trying to, but I haven't figured out the phrase too, but like surprising performances from people who had been sort of written off, like, like transformative, I, I, transformative performances. I guess so. I, yeah. I'm trying to think of how to, how to, how to put that into words where it, it's about like a person that you had sort of written off like that. And then they come out and you go, Oh wow. Like I didn't know that you could do, that as well. Like I, I thought you were just the one trick, you know, the you, performances you of renewal. Oh, performances of renewal. Well, that's for, <laughs> we're really grasping on the, the high bar on this. I'm I say, I mean, it's no, just, I love like, it. We talked about, you know, a bunch of different uh, that that sort of has come up a couple of times in this. So performances that renewed a career. Oh, you there you go. That? I like that. Yes. Renewed a career. Yes. Well, okay. And I, and I would <laughs> parenthetical besides John Travolta. Oh yeah, no John Travolta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> Pulp Fiction stays home. <laughs> I'm gonna be with you. That's good yeah. because Ocean. If you listen last, like, Ocean really was trying to really mess with us with the, yeah, with the whole life choices one. <laughs> and, you know, and you know the thing that 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 annoying about the whole thing is like the whole time <laughs> they spent the thing saying like, oh, Rob set us up with this. Rob says like, um, no, he didn't. I did. <laughs> yeah, I was no. the one who put before sad Christmases. That was yes. my idea. And they spent the whole time <laughs> complaining about you, dude. I That's, gotta say, are you don't be. I mean, I know. You're, I, you're, I, you're, I, you're I suck all the air. Large. Yeah, I, I know, sucked like, all the <laughs> air at the, I know. So the Rob mask and it's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Turns out behind this beard. <laughs> okay, I love that. Performances that renewed a career, no John Travolta. Yeah. Or no John Travolta's. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's uh, John Travolta. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, so that was really great. You guys are, uh, Kyle is always awesome. Lorraine, this is a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, Thank you. What are you up to? What are you doing? Tell yeah, us where can we find you online? Yeah. Where can you find me online? You can find me on Twitter at, under my uh, romance writer name, Laurel Volk. And if you want to join um, in a romance group, there is always Smut University. Oh, that's a great name. Yes. <laughs> Not as smutty as it as it uh, pretends to be, but <laughs> it's it's a good name. I agree. It's a good name. That's not going to matter. It's cool. Right. It's, you know, it, it solved your titling problem, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh, awesome. Uh, Kyle, what are you going to be doing? What you, what do you have? What's happening? Oh, it's January. I, I, I make no plans for January. January is just about recovering. I'll just be, I'll be quietly editing for the next couple of weeks. And so you won't hear much from me. Yeah. We, Except we, here on Saturday Monday. Yeah, we are. We're going to, we're going to haunt this place for a little bit. Uh, yeah. in different times we're together. Uh, we are working on, I know we've teased this a little bit. We are, <laughs> we are now actually deep into pre-production. 
or production, not pre-production. We're producing True. a new show that I think people are going to find yeah. entertaining. I think here in 2022 will be the year that it will finally be revealed. So you can, you can stop teasing the people and actually show them what it is we're working on. We can actually get we can actually give it to them. <laughs> are you guys working on Legally Blonde 3? <laughs> it can be revealed. <laughs> Can you imagine? I get the dog. <laughs> you get the bikini. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you, but if you look at the timeline, I don't think Bruiser's still around. Uh, bru- oh, oh. Yeah. Bruiser 3. It's Bruiser the 3rd. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope this has been entertaining. We hope you're excited for 2022 as much as we are. And uh, we, as always, we love everyone who uh, who listens, who engages. Uh, please make sure to check us out on all the usual places that you find your fine podcasts. Uh, you know, we have our store. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting? We love you, Pete. Yeah, we love we love Pete. We love everybody. Uh, just let's go off and great wishes for everyone for this year. Uh, as we close the door once again on the uh, twenty one. Thanks again, <laughs> Lorraine. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great be start to your year. We'll see you soon. Go do something nice for yourself. <laughs>